All right, so we have a self-signed certificate that when people hit, it says, you know, warning, this is, there's no trusted certificate um, in our browser or on our system that can authenticate uh, this website. So uh, let's use uh, the tools that are available from Let's Encrypt. Let's Encrypt provides free SSL. Now, it's not the most trusted SSL provider on the planet because it's free. Uh, if your bank is using a Let's Encrypt certificate, you might want to think twice about your bank uh, because, you know, we can automate this. We can do all of the verification with the certificate authority online through tools uh, for, you know, super secure sites like banks. You would expect that in order for them to generate what's called a certificate signing request and get their certificate signed by the CA. Uh, there would be, you know, documentation involved. There would be a phone call involved. Uh, they would meet a much higher legal standard than what we're going to go through right here for our small website that we just want to be able to um, authenticate with the Let's Encrypt CA. Essentially, all we're going to do is we're going to prove we own the domain right now. And as long as Let's Encrypt can automatically check and say, oh, okay, you own that domain. Here, we'll sign it. Uh, that's that's all it needs. It just needs proof of ownership at the time that we obtain the certificate, and you'll see how that's done. So we're going to um, add apt uh, repository PPA, and we're going to download the tool from Let's Encrypt called CertBot. And there's our command. Looks just like that. Pause the video, get that one in. And I'm going to hit enter and it's going to go through and it's going to update and it's going to add a repository uh, to Ubuntu for us. And I'll just show you where that is. That's an Etsy apt and actually it wouldn't be just sources.list. If I do apt, there's a apt.conf.d file. No, it'd be sources.list, wouldn't it? sources.list.d. And if we go into the sources.list.d file, we can see there's been a file created called certbot Ubuntu. And there is the repository that's been added to our system for certbot. It's good to go in there in competition as well and check those apt sources. All right. Uh, we're going to go ahead and apt install Python certbot Apache. Now, uh, Let's Encrypt makes this rather transparent so you don't get to see all the steps, which is okay. We're going to generate a certificate signing request. Uh, we're going to we're going to generate a certificate. Uh, we're going to have that certificate signed by the CA so that it can be validated through the root certificate store. So in this case, we have our server newbeck.moo.com, and we're going to send up a certificate signing request. And uh, the pieces of a CSR are kind of important. You want to look that up in terms of what is in a CSR. It's a restful object. You want to take some time and look up certificate signing request. But we're going to send our certificate that we're going to generate. It's going to be a new certificate this time up to Let's Encrypt, right? Now Let's Encrypt is going to sign our certificate with its secret key. And some of the most valuable secret keys on the planet belong to certificate authorities. There's a lot of legal regulation that goes into protecting those secret keys. Uh, so essentially, we're going to get a signature on our certificate that was created with our secret key. And uh, our signed certificate is going to get sent back. So now that we have our signed cert here that has been signed by the Let's Encrypt private key, when a client wants to establish communication that's encrypted with newback.moo.com, it grabs this signed cert and it has information. It has basically the public key for Let's Encrypt in its trusted root certificate store. So it can use that public key that's in its trusted store to validate the private, the, the signature here that was created with the private key. And if the public key here matches, that's able to validate this, then we know that new 
back.moo.com went through this process and we can be sure that newback.moo.com in this case owned the domain at the time the certificate signing request was issued depending on you know if it's a bank that went through a more strenuous process we could depend on that so now because of the public key that came with the browser that we know has been installed there we're able to verify that private key and go through the key exchange process to set up an encrypted session so we get two things we get the ability to set up encryption which we had with our self-signed certificate but we also get uh, a level of confidence here that we know that this website belongs to who it's supposed to belong to all right so let's actually walk through that process in the next video